Hey guys, welcome to Future Creatures DTF. I am one half of your host, Miss Jordana, and with me as always is my right-hand man, Sam. Hello, Jordana. And Jordana, you know I have given you a new title, and I I have to say, this is how I will be referring to you for this episode. Uh, you are not just Jordana, you are Jordana, aka the Terrifier Queen. Um <laughs> Yes, and I will gladly take that title, Sam. Thank you. Which we will be discussing. That will be the meat of the episode, just to let you guys know at the top. Uh, there's going to be a lot of Terrifier talk. Um, yes. And uh, apologize if I sound a little weird, a little under the weather. But um, yeah, how have you been? Well, I've been I've been really good. I We went on vacation, um, watched some really good horror movies, um, and just you know, seen Terrifier two times, hopefully make it like 10 by the end of this year. So <laughs> <laughs> here's hope. Uh, yeah. I, I've, I've been watching a lot of new stuff too. And Ben, and I will be honest, I think from the stuff that I remember that I've seen recently, which, cause it's been a couple, about three weeks since we talked yep. uh, like this, mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of good stuff that I liked lately. Like uh, and I've been so like it's weird, you know, because for so long I was like this year kind of fucking sucked for for like horror movies in particular. And then like in the last month, I've just granted it is October, so that's when all the cool shit like becomes available. Yes. But uh, I've been seeing I've seen some fun stuff. Same, I think. Let's let's talk about like our favorite one other than Terrifier because obviously we're gonna get into that. But why don't you tell me like one that stands out the most that's been like the your favorite that you've watched? Um, I mean, just because it's off the top of my dome, I watched it last night and fucking had a blast with it. Uh, and I don't know your thoughts on it. Okay. Um, I, I saw Trap. Um, oh, I loved Trap. I thought Trap was awesome. Like, too. I, like it scared me because like I listened to this very popular uh podcast where they like talk about bad movies mm -hmm. dj ripley going at it um and i saw to like yesterday like it popped up like like that they did an episode on trap i forgot to give him his button oh he's like dad you ain't getting out of this one you better give me that button there you go um and i was like oh no maybe it's not good uh luckily they loved it and they just uh they they like made fun of it because it is inherently like if you even prick it with a pin it makes no goddamn sense but it was fun <laughs> but that is okay because like you just said and followed up with it was fun it's entertainment it does not to be it does not need to be applaud like it does not need to make sense as long as you're entertained and i'm telling you what i had fun with that movie i thought it was everyone like shat right on it i enjoyed it yeah i i saw a lot of mixed reviews on it and i was like super duper fun yeah. um like and i and for a movie like that i think sort of the fun of it is like is kind of like going well you know that wouldn't happen you know like mm -hmm. and just, but just still going along with the ride and i thought all the performances were great yeah. josh hartnett amazing allison pill who like isn't in the for, which by the way i love like 45 minutes into the movie, let me hear spoiler alert for Trap, if yep. you don't want to know, but 45 minutes into the movie, they're out of the arena, and I'm like, we've still got like an hour left, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> but I loved that, because I'm like, where is this gonna go? And then as the story progressed, I'm like, okay, I don't care at this point where it goes, I'm enjoying it. Oh yeah, absolutely, like, like I said, Allison Pill, the, the mom, yep. like, all of a sudden, she's like the main character, like, almost an hour into the movie and she kills it i was like oh she's awesome you, like i loved her performance i'm glad that you bring her up because i loved her too i thought everybody was good and even um i i don't know uh, so salika so, uh m night's the, daughter m night's daughter did really good mm -hmm. um i just it was a lot of fun um pure you know i think some people maybe were upset because there really isn't a twist and because the whole time you're sitting there and i i, I've, I kind of feel like he did it on purpose because the whole time you're like all right maybe he's not really the killer and this is and there really is no twist but it's it's fun i just i, I really had a blast with it and um i uh i don't i don't know i i just i don't know what people were expecting from it and it was cool nowadays it's like i don't know like for per for example, um, we watched The Substance 
And Ooh. did you watch that one too? No, I'm dying to see it because I am hearing, I'm trying to keep myself in the dark as far as the actual plot, mm -hmm. but little bits and pieces I have seen make it feel like it's going to be very much up my alley in terms of like um, body horror. Body horror, horror it delivers 100%. Yeah. But here's my gripe with this one. Again, if this if the movie was two hours and 21 minutes, if this movie was an hour and a half, I would have been so happy with it. Because of that hour and 10 minute difference, that put me at a three. I get you. I get you. Know you. Like, oh, hundred. I mean, uh, uh, you know me. I'm all about like if I can keep a movie under ninety minutes, I'd be happy. Like, <laughs> like, well, I will recommend one to you that's under ninety minutes. It's a it's ninety two minutes. Okay. Not that I like would know because I'm obsessed with this movie. Motherfucking Daddy's Head on Shutter. I watched it. Oh, <laughs> oh damn! I fucking. Love that movie. I had fun with it. I liked it. I wasn't over the moon with it. I will say, like, I wasn't like, you know, screaming from the rafters that I thought it was like great, but I was like, okay, this terrible fucking title. I will just like yes. straight up the title makes you think like you're gonna get some like head of the table esque, like, or whatever that fucking one with like the fucked up baby thing, man, mom, some crazy cheesy. B movie, and I guess in a way it is, but it's presented like really well. The title undersells what the movie is. <laughs> and I think what I liked about it was that was the alluring part of it because I'm like, Daddy's head, like it doesn't sound right to me, but I need to like investigate. And then when I kind of I didn't look too much into it, and then I watched it. Like, spoiler alert, too, if you have not seen Daddy's head and you plan on watching it, pause. If you have seen Daddy's head, listen, and if you don't care, keep listening. But the part where they're in the kitchen or in the in the dining room, and they're the 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 wife or girlfriend, the son and the dog are all standing there, and they're staring at that thing, and it's like the ball, and then all of a sudden when it just fucking goes zoom and it takes off, I'm telling you, I was like, oh, I was so excited, <laughs> and like Rosalind flipped, and Andrea because she was down was like, what the fuck was that? And the whole rest of the movie because I love. The play on the eye. I love when you think you're looking at something and then it like it goes back to it and it's going back and forth. You know what I mean? It's done it like it did it a couple times throughout the movie where you would look at something and it would go back to the person and go back, go back, go back. And oh, back yeah. And it, it's playing on your, your, um, I don't what like anxiety with that, I guess. Uh, yeah. And like what could be, like what your mind makes things out to be. And I just, I don't know what it was, Sam, but I adore that movie. It's one I think. It might be like top three for me this year. Wow. Okay. Well, I mean, again, I liked it. It definitely will not be on my like top 10 list, uh, but it was something that I was like, I was into. I enjoyed it. Um, it, it definitely was on the positive column, but it, it didn't hit me in that over the top Regard. way, which is fine. <laughs> yes, I know. And like, everyone's just kind of like, what is wrong with you? I'm like, I don't know what this move, this, this movie has over me, but I, it, I just felt like it was, different and if it wasn't different for like the premise of it it's still delivered and for me so i don't know I'm, I'm just happy that daddy had daddy's head was released this year but enough with these other titles we need to talk about motherfucking terrifier three i am gonna tell you right now and i said this off off air but i need the listeners and the viewers to know this is my most looked forward to episode that I've ever done with Jordana. I have been chomping. We have, we have minimally spoken about this movie to try and keep this conversation as fresh and real as possible. Yeah. So I don't even know if she's enjoyed the movie. Um, but I saw this movie on opening day. Cause then you know how I be. I know how you be. And I don't like crowds. Uh, I saw it opening day. The very first show, they didn't do a midnight showing in my town. Um, so I did the the opening day. The first showing was at 12.45 p.m. Love that. And I went there and I knew that I was in for something special based on my experience with how all the other movies that I saw opening day first showing. When I saw, when I saw Alien Romulus, Scream 6, Scream 5, 
Um, I'm trying to think of what the hell else I went and saw on day one. And there was at most four people in the theater when I saw those. Yep. This fucking theater had like 35 people in it at 1245 on a Friday. And I was like, oh, we're in for something special. I can tell. <laughs> like, I love that you had that many people in your theater. Yeah, there, there was. And, and the part that I found that was like kind of wild to me mm -hmm. uh, is I like to look at the demographics of what I was like, who I'm sitting around. Yeah. And I was probably one of the younger people in the crowd. It was like a lot of people like in their like, like I would say like, like later forties and fifties. Mm -hmm. I love that. Yeah. You wouldn't have to like, or you didn't have to worry too much about younger audiences speaking, talking, doing ridiculous stuff that people think is normal nowadays in movie theaters. Yeah, no, I just had one guy who was enjoying the movie to the, to the degree that I was like, are you high? Because like you like, <laughs> ev like, I mean, I mean, we'll get into it. But like, I mean, I'm telling you when he laughed, when I say he laughed at everything, I mean, fucking everything. Like no. it was like, not just like the kills or the funny parts or whatever. It would just literally be like a line, like an interstitial line of like, Hey, can you know, can you can you hand me that thing on the shelf? Ha! <laughs> I was like, okay, buddy. <laughs> I know I'd be like, I don't know what you're on, but I would like some for after this movie. So we don't act like you in the theater. <laughs> yeah. But I saw it opening day, and the reason I bring that up is that from opening day to now, I've been wanting to talk to you because you are the terrifier queen and I have not been able to talk to you, my best, my best friend here, about this shit and Jordana, how did how did how did your viewing go? And then let's get into what you liked and didn't like, and fucking all the blood and guts and testicles of all, of the whole oh, thing. Oh my god, <laughs> and ass cheeks getting yes. chainsawed up. I love it. So, um, so when we when tear okay, so the original plan was when I was in Universal for Halloween Horror Nights, I was gonna go Friday night and go see it because I was like, fuck yes, I'm gonna be on vacation, I'm gonna do it. So Milton decided to roll in and fuck shit up for everyone. And I, you know, obviously I didn't lose anything. I feel horrible for the people that had lost anything, lost life, lost mm -hmm. anything. So I hated to complain. So um, we extended our trip and ended up coming back on Sunday. So mm -hmm. our flight got in at one and I was at a fucking screening showing of Terrifier at 6.50, I think it was. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even care. I was just like, I'm tired. I'm grouchy. I just want to sit on my couch, but I'm going to see fucking Terrifier because I, I just, I could not. Yeah, I, that it, it was out on Friday and I, I, I didn't see it yet. Yeah, I, you, and remember, I, I had, I, I'm glad you, you had the urgency to go because yes. I had remember had said I wasn't even planning on. I was like, I think I might just wait because I think it's gonna. Again, I'm not confirming this, but I believe it's gonna release on Screenbox on Halloween, and I was like, I'm just gonna do that. And then the day before the movie came out, some fucking asshole, and I don't know which page it was because I scrolled through it as quick as I possibly could. So it could be one of our friends. If it is, fuck you. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they posted you. a image and with like the way it was worded, like it, once you saw it, you saw it. And it was two giant spoilers. And I was like, fuck, I, the internet's not going to let me enjoy this movie. I have to go see it now. Like, wow. Isn't that so shitty to like, understandably you want to wear a badge of honor that you've seen this movie. Do you know what I mean? Like it's like the in thing now to like, to see a movie before it actually comes out. Right. We're living yeah. in that era, which I get it. If you're, if you're about that, I get it. But also don't be an asshole when you get these privileges or that if you like had the opportunity, don't ruin it for everyone else. Absolutely. I think that there's a, a, a there's just an urgency when it comes to some of these pages and podcasts and whatever to like, some people have an urgency to like, we got to post about it. We gotta be the first ones to show it and post about it. And for me, I'm like, I don't know. I would, I think there's a, a reasonable moratorium on not spoiling things. Like if it releases at home, on screen box, I would say then maybe what it, one week after that. How about yeah. that? Because then you, you have you ev everyone has the op opportunity to do that. Yes, because not everybody has the opportunity to go to the theater because it wasn't playing in every theater. So there's some people who physically couldn't go to a fucking theater, and you just fuck them like by posting it. So exactly, and people don't think beyond themselves, which I mean, that happens all the time. But so 
like when I was buying the tickets the day of, I was panicking because I'm like, oh, this is like a small theater, but like it's filled up. You know what I mean? So we got our seats. And when we came in, I was all decked out. I had my, my shirt, my flannel, my backpack. I probably look like art with the dark circles into my eyes. But still. <laughs> <laughs> so like we get in there and it wasn't just one theater. It was like two theaters was showing it. And I was like, like so happy. I'm like, yes. So we get in there and great seats and i'm just telling you like i think i blacked out during the movie <laughs> i think the first <laughs> time i was just so like wrapped up that i was actually watching it that i didn't pay it i did pay attention there's a lot to absorb mm -hmm. um so i feel like the my first viewing i was kind of like i had so many fucking questions and trying to like pin the like make the dots connect after a first watch is no bueno you know what I mean? Like, it's not really going to make too much sense. So, of course, I had to go for a second showing. And it's definitely changed my opinion from the first viewing. Okay. Well, I got to know. I, I want to go to you first. You, you're, you're, the, you're the champion of this franchise. I'm a, 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 I'm a, I'm a two for three year on this one. I'm, I'm still not a fan of one, which I did rewatch uh, the other night. I don't know why I put it on. I'm like, I know I'm going to hate this. And I watched it and I was like, yeah, I still fucking hate this. <laughs> like, nothing's changed. <laughs> nothing's changed. I don't know why I keep putting it on. Um, you might, it might one day just click. It might it, one day you might be like, okay, this is okay. This is cool. But you don't have to like it to like the other two movies. Absolutely not. But so I want to go to you first for your, your, and I am curious because you, you split it there. <clears throat> what were your initial thoughts on the movie? Because it, it sounds like they have changed from viewing one to viewing two. So I guess, yeah, what was what was your initial thought overall? So initially I was just kind of like, why? Okay, so my thing was, is I had a feeling like with Victoria in, in the mix, I was like, I feel like someone's going to be a little bit more standout-ish than art in this movie. Mm -hmm. For some reason, I was just like, eh. Because I mean, like the little pale girl was like a nice sidekick, but I think art still like, had the reins and i still felt art like was, we were, was still the focus yes but for this one i felt like we were kind of like homing in on vicky and i didn't appreciate that at the end because like i didn't understand why she was talking why she was like the ringleader and it's not that i don't like vicky as a character or like her lore and the whole thing but i was just kind of like but why like i feel like when it comes to a three point in movies when it's supposed to be the antagonist, the protagonist having a battle, I always feel like there's just like this weird extra character. Yes. So that kind of like, I, I maybe had like PTSD from Halloween ends. You know what I mean? Like maybe I was feeling like, Oh, it's like, like why is this transpiring this way? I will be honest with you. Um, I don't, my gripes with the movie are few and far between. Mm -hmm. um, there's only a few that I, and I, I'm not, super like when i say like like they're, they're not that important to me yeah. that is one i'll be honest uh vicky's sort of overall taking over of the story in the third or in this movie seventh act i don't know uh, <laughs> uh um i will i will agree uh it, it wasn't preferred however mm -hmm. and as we break down the the plot and we go along with it I at least liked that it finally she is the puzzle piece that gives you some fucking answers as to what the hell has been going on in this fucking franchise. And we did get some goddamn answers and I'm so happy we did. See, now that's that now you said it. There's the thing. We did get answers, but I was just like okay, but these answers are now giving more fucking questions because I felt like I left even the second viewing still having questions because like, hello, we get introduced to Sienna's dad. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like we, we, we saw the whole interaction between Sienna and, and her dad. Mm -hmm. And I still like, I feel like he's such an important piece, but he's not giving it to us right away. But like the scene where he's holding on the picture and he has like that evil look. And it almost seems like, like there's a transference of power of some sort or something. Yeah. That and also too, what was the other one? Oh, when, oh my God, who was it? So, did someone, and I want, if you can remember, did someone say, 
Oh, it's when they were talking about it was the podcast girl and her friend were in there at the table mm-hmm. when they were speaking about Jonathan and Sienna's dad saying that he was violent. Did you hear that? Yeah, I mean, I I, I recall they had hinted at erratic behavior in two. They had said that he had the brain tumor and that it caused him to basically turn into a crazy person of some sort. But they never really eva- they never really went beyond that. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I, I believe that was said as well. Something along the, along those lines. So it's to me, it's giving like some some clarity in a sense, because clearly the man was not OK. Yeah. But now it's like so like to what degree is his connection with everything? Because, again, art needs a vessel. Oh, yes. Uh, well, see, I, I, and again, I know I we're going to have to get into it, like how you interpreted it and how what, are you really active tonight, buddy? Um, like, Fuck your talk about terrifying. Yeah. I'm over here with my bum. Because uh, I feel like we may have. Dude, you've got it. Wait up. Wait up. Please. Um, <laughs> I feel like th- th- there's different ways you can interpret it because it, it isn't a movie that necessarily, even the answers it provides, it doesn't really provide them in a clear way. It sort of leaves them open-ended. And um, I don't like, I guess I, I'm just going to give you an overall thought here okay? Yes. because I feel like we need to start breaking into it and just digging, a, digging into it scene by scene. Mm-hmm. I fucking loved this movie. It's so it's so fucking good though. It truly is like it's so good. Absolutely loved it. Like the journey I've been on with this franchise is fucking nuts for me. From a movie I fucking despise in the first movie to the second movie which was one of my top two favorite movies of the year mm-hmm. to this which is my favorite movie of the year. Yes. Love I love this. It, it and it's it's tonally a little different. I will say. Um, okay. Yes. I, I I truthfully, I don't know about you. There was no bitches in my theater. Uh, <laughs> every not one person reacted to any of the gore or any of that. But what they did, I mean, I, I you would have thought we were watching a comedy. I mean, yes. eh, this so much laughter in this and. Mm. I do feel like only I actually prefer two because yes. art was, and it's hard. It's insane to say like art was more brutal in two. Well, <laughs> art is doing art things in this movie, but it's done in a way that I feel like the audience is supposed to have fun with it yeah. versus in two art is like, like, I mean, it, he's nastier. Like, I don't know. Like it, I'm not laughing at the, at the bedroom scene. I'm always like, Oh God, I'm not. Yes. I mean, I am laughing when he puts the potatoes in that fucking bitch's face, but uh. yeah. But like, even like the Halloween shop scene, like that was somewhat funny, but then it gets to a point where you're just like, Oh shit. Like, yeah. Did, did, yeah. So do, do you agree with that? Cause I can't tell if I, that's just me. Um, or if, do you think that this one is totally, obviously super fucking violent but like is it totally a little more on the a little like on the comedy bar is a little further to you know uh uh, switched up a little bit or am i just crazy no a thousand percent and i think i think the reason why he went like that is because he they went really hard with their kills in this one you know what Mm -hmm. i mean like even like the vicky scene with the glass watching him you know and she's fucking getting (laughs) off on a piece of (laughs) I I love your your description, but you don't want to say it. You're like, what she's and he's and she watching it. And yeah, (laughs) I know because I couldn't believe it. I was like, and then gush. Yeah, I'm like, is she? And then you could hear the slicing. And I'm just like, oh, she is. And like everyone in the theater is like, like we got those. We got laughs. We got like, I was audible. I was just like, holy, like, oh, the, the retractor, like that right before she starts, but when he takes the blade and slice his fucking skull and then pull, uh, like, I was just like, it's beautiful. It's amazing. Like, I, I just love that they crafted these kills even more extravagantly than two. Cause I'm like, how far can you, can you get past two? And then he just set a completely different bar for this movie. Yeah. And I think you're right. I mean, I, I like, I actually, there was a, a there's a very big, 
fitness influencer. I'm not a fitness guy, but I follow him. <laughs> and he just commented on about it. And I like, I my still to this day, uh, I'm getting like, I have, it has like over 400, my comment has like over 400 fucking comments on it. Like, yeah. So it just keeps adding. And I'm like, all right. I, I, but it, um, Good. like he was like, he, he wasn't shitting on the movie, but he was like, you know, at a certain point, doesn't the level of violence, like it just, it becomes so over the top that it's, it doesn't really affect you. You, you, it becomes comical. And I was like a hundred percent, like that's, yeah. this movie is more of a comedy than it is a horror movie in my opinion. Um, because I mean, the level of violence is so like, you, like you said, how much further can you go than two? Well, you go three, but now you're going so over the top that it's, 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 it's bordering on like a, a, a violent Looney Tunes cartoon. <laughs> like, That's exactly what it is. And it's like, it, it I love it because like, you know, they're going to eat up four. Like this, this is, and not to sound cheesy and like, you know, obviously we'll get back into the plot, but like, this is huge. Again, I said this, did I not in 2022 when I'm like, this is huge for horror fans that Terrifier 2 is like blowing up the way it is. What yeah, it's, it's made over $55 million now. Is it, and like beating out big, big box office movies like The Joker. Like, I am just, this is a time that I'm happy to be alive during this time. <laughs> There's yeah. other things where I'm just like, I wish I was not here. But like, this is amazing. And like, for... Like, I, I, I'm already, like, trying to begin to grasp what's going to happen in four, just by what we were given in two, so or three. So let's, do you want to, like, start from, do you want to start from? Let's start with Jingle Bells. Uh, the opening of a, what looks like a Home Alone Yes. Scene. Oh, that is my number one complaint, which isn't the movie's fault. It's the marketing's fault. I will say when I was in the theater, it did feel weird because you are watching a Christmas movie and I'm like, it's October and it's 70 degrees outside. <laughs> exactly. Like I would feel the vibes would be so much more different if it was December, there was snow outside and it was like a holiday setting. A thousand yeah. percent. And I, but that's, that's not the movie's fault. So you can't knock it for that. Like, you know, just watch it again at Christmas. I'm sure I fucking will, but yes, but like, I, but you're right though. Like I wish you would have just waited and released it in the December time, but like, I guess we're wrong because it's the most successful unrated film of all time now. So, like, I guess we're wrong, but I, I think it will be. I think the rewatch, like, this will probably be one that when I rewatch it, it will be like on a list of like, I, like I always watch Christmas Evil every year, and you know, like um, the the one I told you about that's like a the Home Alone ripped off the no, Pair Noel uh, six six one or whatever. Yes, like this will be like one of my Christmas horror movies going forward for the rest of my life a thousand percent and also too i will say this and i will admit it because i don't really care so i watched the i watched three the first time by myself but Roz did go the second time okay and i covered her eyes during like you know obviously vicky having fun with herself and i like told her about the opening scene you know what i mean i was just like well kid does die he does get killed she's like nah whatever it's a movie like and yeah. she was you know like even even the parts to me i just i know like my kid and i know she knows it's a movie like if my kid wasn't into horror there's no fucking way i would ever bring her to a, a terrifier movie i'm gonna be honest with you like if you're if you're a parent like I, I, as a kid or if you're a parent is if you're like cool with them seeing like violent you know like horror movies and you like let them watch halloween and all this shit this is the but this is the one I'd have them watch like of the three like I it's know. it's more funny yeah. um the kills are so over the top that like you know whatever like I mean so it's like that's obviously fucking fake yeah uh there's I don't think the only nudity in the movie is a scene where you see some test well out of their ball sack testicles <laughs> <laughs> there's no nudity in the movie uh the probably the only thing that i would say is the most questionable is probably probably vicky uh uh bad vicky's vagina <laughs> vicky fucking up her badge and i was just because she's like what is she, what is she doing what is she like why do i and i'm like it's just like gross because she's like messing up her downstairs mix up and she's just like oh okay and then when it happened i just put Lee, greg and i both did that and she was just like eating her popcorn <laughs> not even you know what i mean like not even fucking phased by it so Whatever. I know, like, there's people who went to the movies and there's, like, three-year-olds, four-year-olds, and stuff like that, which, again... 
Did you see the statistic that they believe that this movie probably would have made a, another couple hundred thousand dollars that all of a sudden, like at the end of its run, um, the wild robot all of a sudden had like a weird spike in theater ticket sales. And I guess theater like industry experts say that usually happens when there's a horror movie out and it's happened in the past. So a bunch of kids were like, yeah, mom, buy us tickets to go see fucking the wild robot. And then they went and saw Terrifier. I love it. I do too. I'm like, Fuck yes, keep doing that. I, I feel like I, I feel like they should like like that. Damien should get to like write to like like Disney and be like, uh, "You're welcome." <laughs> <laughs> you are still welcome for this. <laughs> I love that though. I mean, okay. I would I would do that. Oh, a hundred percent. As a kid, I would have done that. Are you like, out of your mind? Like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. So let's let's get into scene. Ready? So the the cold air is in the air. The house is all set up with its Christmas lights. It's all decked out. And this mom, you know, she just wants to go to bed. This little girl gets up and she she hears Santa. And we all fucking know it's Artie Claus. Yes. <laughs> and I'm telling you what, just the anticipation of knowing that he, like it was him, got me almost excited for like a kid on Christmas thinking it's Santa. I was so fucking excited. I'm like, <laughs> I can't wait until he comes down the chimney. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, it, it's good. Yeah. The, the, what, so overall... Like, what were your initial thoughts on the opening? Okay. Oh, oh, and by the way, uh, guys, uh, from this point forward, uh, if you've not seen the movie or you care about spoilers, we are going to be deep diving uh, on a scene by scene basis. So uh, come back later if you want to hear us talk, you know, blah, blah, blah. So that's your warning. Yes. That's it. I love the opening. The opening is it sets the tone for the whole fucking movie. Um, it's going to be a little funnier. It's going to be a little more over the top. Uh, I mean, what? So, like, again, let's just. So we were on track here. Obviously, what happens? Art, she, little girl sees Santa. She uh, runs. Uh, she, she figures out it's Art. I think she hides. He goes into the into her little brother's room. You hear the little brother be like, "Why are you waking me up?" And then you room, you hear Art uh, hack up the little boy. Um, which here's my thought on it. All of that goddamn hoopla and bullshit that people were, it's so wrong. Ah! I'm like, you didn't even see it. And in my opinion, what you do see later on is that later on the mom like peeks her head in the door and you get a brief shot of just like body parts. It's the fakest looking effect in the movie. And I almost feel like intentionally because they're like, well, this will be controversial. So we got to really make sure people know like this is fake fucking fake and and you know what it really sucks that he couldn't add like the more sinister tone to it to make it like oh i did fuck this kid up and it's you know it's it's brutal because like but like michael myers and h18 he killed the kid yeah i mean there's so in a brutal way i think the biggest one that always that that i saw is the the people are like like oh okay but you love it the clown who eats children that's his entire gimmick he only attacks children and you're like that's good but art who Go, he's an equal opportunity murderer. <laughs> he does not uh, discriminate. <laughs> uh, you're 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 gonna be mad at him. So I, it just all after all that, I was like, honestly, like it's probably the tamest thing in the whole movie. <laughs> and same, I was thinking because I'm like, oh man, this is gonna be brutal. And then when it happened, I was like, that really wasn't that bad, but it was a great fucking opening. And it yeah, because really... it, it lets you know where you're at. Everybody's off. Uh, nobody's off limits. Okay, but here's here's not was a gripe now it's not now that i have a clear understanding a clearer i don't want to say a clear understanding i have a clear understanding of what's going on when it when it did him in the santa costume then it went to five years then it went to present day i you do have you do have to kind of do some math in your head to like figure out because that is so it there is a weird time jump back and forth yes um but once you understand it it's fine Uh, But it does take a little bit of time to, like, honestly figure out what the fuck the timeline is. And I thought it was kind of, like, in the beginning to, like, give it so much. And, again, I might, like, just chalk that up to being completely fucking jet lagged from traveling and getting up super early and flying. And, and, you know what I mean? Because I was just like, wait a second. So that was then. And then five. And then the present. I I just. I don't think it's jet lag. I I saw it at 1245 on a. (laughs) <laughs> on a bright sunny day uh and um i i think that 
that is a jarring uh, element to the movie is that initial like 15 minutes like of jumping back and forth yes. um but it's acceptable i mean yes. uh, you, you can piece together what's going on it just takes some time to do it and that doesn't and that didn't that ha- did not and has not like made any effect on how much i enjoyed the movie it's just i feel like for the people that he, i wish you would take it in the, in the perspective of the people that like are gonna hop on the terrifier wagon that maybe did not watch one that did not watch two or doesn't have like knowledge it i think it would have been better if he had like a little more of a clear route when he was doing what was intended to be happening so you know people could understand because like afterwards i don't know about you but i was like okay so this and this and this and then this and i think you know what i mean like you had like your theories of what was going on what means what you know what i'm saying so like even for someone who has followed the movies thoroughly and loves them it still was kind of i don't want to say like hard to figure out but you had to kind of like dive deep into the lure of what was the you know of what's going on i mean damien's never his strong suit has never been a clear path to his stories i would say but this is i think his clearest i would say of the three uh i think it there are threads you can follow um Mm -hmm. and uh and we'll get to those now okay so then we get to the next was, he he hacks up the the husband in bed, which to the a, a wife who's the soundest sleeper in the planet. Uh, Can you imagine hearing that? Like hearing yeah. Deanna getting hacked up and like we say for Greg at the first whack, I would know. I'd be like, what the fuck? I wish there was a scene like where he started at his feet or something, and like he's like as he's dying, he's like, listen, you bitch, like what are you? Come on, like <laughs> seriously. But like I don't know this the the opening like and him obliterating her. Yeah. Oh, I just, I loved it. It was just so, and then of course I had a question too, like what happened to the little girl? Yeah. I saw everyone saying that, that that's like a thing. And uh, I feel like she's dead. Like what, why, what would be the reasoning in her coming back? See, now that's the thing. So I'm with you on that because I'm like, she either just died and you know, there's no sense of um, entertaining two kids being attacked in, in the opening scene mm-hmm. but then there's like the small part of me that's like maybe there's an, an some sort of importance to this story possibly i mean because i mean this is sort of a this is, this has no real bear this opening has no bearing on the actual plot it's more or less just to set the tone yep. um i mean these are not characters in this fucking franchise i mean they are you know what I mean? they are yes. characters in the franchise but they're not important pieces important pieces yeah yes. um but uh, i saw people but my heart is just going like i mean it's art like has thing. never ever 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 <laughs> shown mercy on anyone true ever he's never let anyone live like he uh, intentionally i mean if they if if they beat him which the only only one ever has mm-hmm. um i mean he he's that's not really i mean granted i i'm not the writer but i feel like from what I, my knowledge of art is he does not, there, you don't get away from art is, is what I'm saying is you are, you, you are going to, if art has the choice, he's going to kill you yes, he's unless gonna. you are Vicky, which gives him his power, which we'll get to uh, uh, in a little while. <laughs> yes. And you know what? That, the whole, okay. Yes. So then we get uh, uncle Greg going to pick up Sienna. And Sienna is in a mental health facility um, and she is going to her aunt's for the holiday. Now, if I'm correct, is this the same mental health facility that Vicky is at? Because they did not make that clear, but I have to assume probably. They did. It didn't make it clear either. And I don't know because I don't know. And that's, that's the other thing too, is trying to connect that because she's in there. Vicky was in there, but then when, when it was two, Vicky was gobbling up the nurse and yes. Jericho. Yes. Which I loved watching him die. Cause I hate I, him. <laughs> I was going to, I was going to ask how you felt about that. Cause I didn't know if you liked him or if you didn't like him. I, I hate him. He's, he's a piece of shit and, and he's, and he's ruining wrestling and I was happy to see him go. <laughs> well, he, he got it pretty, pretty decently. So that, yeah. that's good. Um, I love that part though, where, it was after that and they get on the subway and the guy's dressed like him and he's like doing the horn at them. And he's like, can I get a picture? And they both just turn. 
<laughs> yes, I love him. that. And you didn't see him kill, but mm-hmm. uh, but then Art is wearing a fresh, clean um, art suit, so you know he somehow killed him and didn't bleed all over the place. I don't know. <laughs> That's yeah. Art's. He, that was his only non-messy kill, I guess. He probably had Vicky do it. Yeah, <laughs> with her powers. <laughs> So yes, so that 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 it draws an interesting question if that they were at the same. So I would, I'm just gonna go ahead and assume that they are because I feel like Damien does things for a purpose, even though he makes it seem like it's not. So yep, I agree. And with th- and then so basically he drives uh, her home. She's gonna be staying with them for the holidays or a while. Yep. Um, and so we're introduced to uh, her aunt, um, which I'm sure you know the character's name, and then. The most important, the second most important character in the movie is the new character, Gabby. Yes. And I don't know mom's name. I know Uncle Greg, just because obviously I'm married to Greg. Um, I can't think of her name. I will call her the, because I, I, I tell you this, Jordana, I watched the entire movie and the whole time in the theater, whenever she was on screen, I was like, I can't believe they got Selma Blair to do this. I was she, like, I am. It's not Selma Blair. It looks exactly like her, though. I was like, this is cool that Selma Blair's in this. And then I I Googled it, and I was like, oh, fuck. That's not her, but it looked just like her. And she also looks like a girl that I follow, and she hates the Terrifier franchise, but (laughs) because I didn't want to send it to her and be like, hey, you look like this girl from Terrifier 3, but looks identical. But her name is Margaret Ann Florence, and she is, oh, my God, who is she? Jess. Her name is Jess. Jess. Okay. So yes. Aunt, Jess Aunt Jess and and Gabby. And Gabby is obsessed with her older cousin, um, uh, Sienna. Um, mm-hmm. What What do you think of Gabby here? Gabby's obviously a big piece of this, and presumably going to be a big piece going forward. She drove me nuts in this movie. I'm sorry, but I was just like, Gabby, you need to not be in Sienna's business because you don't want to get tied up in this shit. Yeah, I will say for the first few minutes of Gabby on screen time, I had to adjust to her personality because I was like, oh, this kid's annoying. Yeah. Uh, but like as that. the movie went on, I that subsided. Mm-hmm. I I personally think that the that the reason they did this, they're kind of course correcting what they did. And and no disrespect to the actor who plays Jonathan. Mm-hmm. I think that they made a mistake in casting Jonathan because you could have written this very easily they casted a kid who was too old to play Jonathan when he, I mean, first of all, that kid was too old to be going, mommy, mommy. Uh, <laughs> yes, he was. And then by the time this, this one comes around, he grew two and a half fucking feet. So he, he's not going to be the sympathetic child anymore. No. So I feel like they had to course correct by including this Gabby character. Do you have, do you think there's any smoke to that fire? I absolutely do. And I, it made me sad because I really like Jonathan. Um, I, I He's the worst part of this movie. I I know. (laughs) He's absolutely the worst part of this movie. And he's one of the biggest, that whole situation is one of my biggest gripes in this whole movie, but we will get to that because that's obviously towards the end. But I, I, yeah, I completely, I felt like, okay, this is going to be like the sibling limb in in a, a sense that's going to be important because clearly Jonathan is off at college. And I had this like feeling like one of, I said it too, I said it to my sister in law, some, major person is going to get killed yeah oh yeah we 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 said it many times in this podcast that we both believe that i almost was going to go to the extremes of thinking that sienna was going to die at the end sacrificing herself for something but um we're not there yet so that's that's i was happy with that outcome because i i didn't know how i was feeling at the end and when yes so um yeah jonathan's now in college and he's still awkward as fuck and they made him suck they did, but there's some... Okay, since we're already here, I'm just going to go out ahead and say it because I'm... Well, I'm focusing on it. So throughout the movie, did you notice too, like they honed in on him taking his medicine? Remember like that shot of the sink and there was like the prescription bottle and it said Jonathan Shaw? Yes. So I feel like there's some sort of mental health connection to the family because obviously the dad had mental health issues. Um, well... Well, it could be, but I also presume that he was also in treatment and that was like his His medicine for his whatever, you know, his trauma that he's obviously incurred. (laughs) Yes, but but here I am on my like trying to maybe look deeper, but like in two, when um, Sienna was watching the TV show and like the news reporter was on there 
and she was talking she's like oh like the inpatient stay that you had that one time right sienna remember like when she's talking and like sienna heard it on the screen so i just it made me feel like and now you say that that's super obvious that that's probably what it was but i just i i don't know i just feel like he's playing on like the family having deep mental health issues because i feel like dad had super well i think they all got some mental health issues now but i get what you're saying like pre-existing ones yes and maybe like art was is using that as an entryway to their realm do you know what i mean like maybe it's like so powerful because it's like a, i don't know I'm, maybe i'm going too far off the fantasy realm but this is what i'm thinking i know i think you're I mean, I think you're right. And I actually, honestly, I'm glad you brought that up because I feel like I went into this movie knowing what Damien said that like about he wants to, he wants to steer out of fantasy and back into just more of a slasher, like a, a grounded slasher, which he definitely fucking didn't do in this movie. Thank you. He <laughs> but didn't. I think he set up four to be more grounded in a way uh but we'll get there because it's very confusing what he's saying and what he's presenting <laughs> and that's the thing too because that's what I, that was one of my other things in the first watch was i wish this would pick a lane for me i wish it like if you're gonna do this biblical storyline with these hidden meanings and have a deeper tone to it home in on that and get rid of and i'm not even saying get rid of but like lessen the 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 kills and like the the production and i it's not that i want that but like either stick to a slasher and have it be like outlandish gore and then have like the premise of the killer and what's mm. happening or like if you're gonna go deep go fucking deep but like i i i wanted i i wanted like but after i said that and i watched it for the second time i appreciated the serious tones to it after like the fun gory scenes and like the kills and him like waving to santa when when art would get like remember like he'd get serious and he'd turn and his face was super like oh yeah like stone cold i'm like that's that like they are giving the slasher and they're giving so i can't really be mad at it i like it and i and i'm gonna be honest i like the more fantastical element because i to me i I'm always more, unless it's Scream, I'm always more into a, personally, I'm more yep. into a, um, you know, supernatural monster fucking thing. Yes. But either way, uh, let's move on from here because basically we get the most, to me, the most confusing part of the whole fucking movie is next, uh, which I feel like, remember I asked, I was like, I'm like, Jordan, do you think they're going to give a reasonable reason why art is here on Christmas versus Halloween? The answer is no. No, oh, no. <laughs> the answer is no, and it makes no sense. I don't like, and I okay. So here's my other thing too. I loved the horror movie nods, like the opening scene with The Shining when he puts his head through the door. Yep. And now the scene that I'm assuming that you're talking to is when Vicky and him go to the house. The 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 house is going to be demolished and vicky gets in her tub of Oop. her tub and then she like <laughs> her tub looks like she's gonna kill herself well, yes which makes no but i guess okay so this makes no sense because at first i'm like you know this is before they explain what vicky really is mm -hmm. uh and i'm like oh so vicky's crazy but she's looking in the mirror and she looks at how fucked up she is so you think she's gonna kill herself um and and then sit in a tub of poop um yeah, and then art nice. art just sits in a chair for five fucking years and just and rocks like himself to fucking yeah he's like in like a I they're like hibernating yeah they're yeah, they're yes and that's exactly what it felt like is that they were just kind of like re re rejuvenating like re, re refresh i don't know but like that whole, that, I was just kind of like, huh. But they've never needed to do that before. In the first movie, he shoots himself in the fucking head. <laughs> and he regenerates hours later. Like, there's that. That's yeah. that's what I don't under-fucking-stand. And there's points in this movie where I feel like Damien doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. But he's just, he does it and he's going to be like, oh, I meant to do that. Yeah, I think he is, I mean, I think it's pretty obvious he's sort of, He's like he's like driving a car with no fucking brakes. Like he's 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 got to make an option. He's just picking it. But I know. So this is the part like like it just irks me because I'm like okay, so he only comes around Halloween. 
They're in a hibernation state for some fucking reason that's never been explained before or needed before. Mm -hmm. And instead of, and by the way, he slept through Halloween apparently five times. Uh, cause, th cause you could argue like, oh, maybe he wakes up on Halloween, but he slept through it five times. Yeah. Um, and then, so these two contractor guys come in who actually at first I thought was Jason Patrick. I'm not going to lie. I was yes. like, oh, fucking Jason Patrick's here. And <laughs> yes. And then they just accidentally wake them up and then, and they're like, we're up and let's go fuck up the town. <laughs> And that to me was another red flag that some, there's more to it because how the, I mean, I know there's not, but like, why, why on that five year mark are they up? What did these two do? You know what I'm saying? Like it, it, it was very weird how it was presented, but I appreciate the whole fucking like kill scene. Like that was cool. Yeah, absolutely. The, 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 the two kill scenes are good. Cause basically get up, uh, not Gabby, that'd be, really fucked up but uh vicky gets one and art gets the other um uh, vicky wakes up from her poop Oops, tub yep. um and then of course as afra mentioned uh masturbates with a shard of glass while watching art kill the guy with the box cutter which i thought was pretty fucking cool and then this ready <laughs> oh yes 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 he's like oh yeah art, art art's like naughty girl naughty girl <laughs> i couldn't help it i was that guy but like like at that part because he was fucking hilarious like david howard thornton so funny like so goddamn good at his craft it he is so fucking funny in this movie like i mean i think it's the next scene if i'm correct yeah because it's the next scene is he, he gets this the, the santa suit oh, i God. cannot tell you i think one of my this like not even like of the year like mm -hmm. one of my favorite things i've ever seen in horror movies period is art walking by the fucking the bar <laughs> seeing santa getting yeah. all with no vocal with no voice getting so excited like a child he knocks two drunk bitches over <laughs> he doesn't kill them either that's that's <laughs> the point i was gonna say to you is that he doesn't let anyone go no he let these two bitches go because he was meeting santa <laughs> yeah <laughs> well yeah yeah so he fucking pushes them out of the way so funny and then we get the bar scene which is what uh, basically it's just the excuse to get get uh art in a santa suit but god damn i loved it just like it just is even if, if if honestly he left and didn't kill anybody i would have been just I, just as happy because art like selling that was so fucking funny i laughed so hard and then there was a point where i was just like cupping my face because i was like he's so cute like <laughs> he's just so ridiculous and that's what i love about this fucking character is the range that david howard thornton gives to art where he's hilarious and frightening makes, makes sense he's brutal he's frightening just and like so simple like to give smiles but then when it's like the stone cold look and his eyes are huge like oh man he's he does something i love uh, that man it's awesome uh mm -hmm. we get uh, a a booger um from revenge of the nerds uh cameo here i believe i believe it was booger wasn't it curtis armstrong yes i believe so and then it's what's his name the ice cream man it's um Oh, that's actually what I'm thinking of. I'm not thinking. Oh. It's not Booger. It, it's um, Clint Howard. That's who yes, it is. Clint Howard, yes. And, uh, and I believe the guy who played Santa as well uh, is actually a famous actor as well. Um, yeah, he was in like Three from Hell, The Munster. Okay, apparently he's a Rob Zombie guy. Uh, oh, you uh, know who that guy was? And I, I was literally going to say it. What's it's that? John Abrams. For the who plays Santa? The one that got killed. The, the worker because um, oh okay because i could tell by his face like i could tell he was older but i knew it was him from his eyes because i'm like because he has like the the dark hair and like the stone cold blue eyes mm -hmm. and when he was like talking through i'm like I, that guy i know i feel like i know him and i thought it was him because he was in scary movie right uh let me see here i'm uh john it is john abrams and yeah it's it's bobby from uh scary movie yeah yes Yes. So I, I had a feeling it was him. Anyway. Good eye. Good eye. I, I, cause I honestly, I, I genuinely, I'm like, Oh, that's Jason Patrick. Cool. And then when Jason Patrick showed up later, I actually thought it was, uh, <laughs> um, the, 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 the nerd from Buffy, the vampire slayer. And I, I didn't realize till I went home and like Googled it. I was like, Oh, well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But like, cause everyone's like aged and stuff. And then it's so hard to tell like who's who and, 
clearly yes. Jason Patrick was only there for like one day. <laughs> yes. But like, so, okay. We'll, we'll touch on him because still I have so many questions, but Daniel Roebuck is the guy that played Santa. Yes. And, yeah. and yes, you are right. He's a Rob Zombie guy and I have no clue anything about that. So yeah, glad, glad everyone was excited about that, but I didn't really care. But we get Art sits on his lap. Santa loves art for some reason, which I loved. <laughs> He's like, oh, clowny, clowny. Yeah, and they're like best buds. And then he, Art, proceeds to fucking piss all over him. He literally pisses his pants. From one shot. And it's like. So we know Art can, we, we know art can poop because yeah. of, of, of part one. And now we know that Art can pee. So. And here's some other interesting facts that I've learned about Art watching this movie. He has manners because he washes his dishes and washes his hands after mm-hmm. he goes to the bathroom and he kills people. And eats their candy, that eats their cookies. Like he washes the dish and he puts it away. So at least he has fucking manners. You can't say that for some people. Some people can't even wash a goddamn dish. Oh, Arthur absolutely. Pumpkin. Oh yeah, no. He washes his clothes, and uh, I will say there's one like, and I don't. I think it maybe was a continuity thing that just it kind of bothered me mm-hmm. because they're all like, "Ah, oh, Art, he's just a weird clown guy." I'm like, he is covered in blood. He is like his his gloves are. Clearly so covered, awesome. covered in blood. You should not be like, ah, ha, ha, ha. like, 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 I'm like, it, that just bothered me. I was like, I was like, you should have put some fresh clothes on him, Damien. That that way he just looks like a weird clown, not a. I have clearly just got done murdering. Like, yeah, I know, and also too, like, if that was me and I saw, because remember, like, when clowns were a thing and they would just show up places. Yeah. If I saw a clown in a bloody suit, I would be like. I think I'm done drinking for tonight and I'm going to go home and I'm going to make sure that my eyes are watching that no clown is following. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, just, just to be normal. (laughs) Yes. So, okay. The other thing too, that I wanted to ask right before we get into this scene, because he used his little practice dummies, but like rats are a thing in this movie. Yeah. I think Damien like got some discount on like a rat rental or something. I don't know. Yeah, Like that. I just granted. I love the use of them later on. Mm-hmm. And I love that they were like the test subjects for his little canister of uh, liquid nitrogen. Yeah, that he used in, mm-hmm. in the scene. But like, it wouldn't be a terrifying movie without him whipping out a gun. Yeah, and he does, and yeah. it's great. Uh, and uh, it, which I saw that that so like I saw a review of like uh, these three guys that um, and two of them had seen the other two, and one was like he just no, I'll go with you guys and see it. Yeah. And I think to a new viewer that was kind of, that might be shocking. Cause like I saw, he was like, he's like, like, he's like, that was my least favorite part of the movie. Cause he's like, why would he use a gun? And it's like, he kind of always gets, that's, that's, that's always in his back pocket. <laughs> yeah, It's like his old, like his old trusty. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if he doesn't have a creative way to kill you or like a really painful way, he's just going to fucking shoot you. Yeah. So he, and, and also I have a, I'm wondering if, um, Clint Howard is like, um, you're not, putting all this fucking makeup on me you just you just just do a digital fucking bullet hole <laughs> like that's that's as much as i'm doing on this movie all right i mean i'd be happy with having a scene just talking with art and then getting like a oh, punch in the head. like we, we would take out all of them i mean we would sit there for 12 hours and let them do whatever they needed to us for body makeup but i i feel like clint howard i mean even it just off of his brother's paychecks alone he's he's like i'm i'm here because I'm I'm here to support the movie, but I'm not gonna you're not putting all that shit all over me, all right? <laughs> I ain't no test dummy, I ain't doing it. But that whole that whole sequence I loved. And again, like the the whole when it comes to Santa and he's like pleading, begging for his life. I got kids, I got grandkids, and you're just like, oh fuck, like he's gonna fuck him up. And God. and of course, like and I, I think I didn't really piece it together until I said it myself, like this is like where we're at, like Looney Tunes. This is something you would see in Looney Tunes, like a hundred percent. Like you would see, you know, Wiley or Coyote or somebody like, you know, or Daffy Bugs Bunny would like spray Daffy Duck and like freeze him in ice. And then he would hit him with a like a pick, like a, a thing and it would shatter. Obviously not in this matter, but so, you know what I mean? Yes, I do. But I love it because I, lo- I feel like he probably drew inspiration from that. Cartoons. That's like, yeah, that's the only like. The only way to to explain, I mean, I'm sure he probably has sat around and been like, what is the most creative ways that I can fuck people up? Because you're Damien Leone. Like, of course, you have to know yeah. what your next move is going to be. But 
you got you got to level it up. <laughs> yeah, and how like how shitty and amazing for him because like so much pressure and like it's paid off. But like at what point is he gonna do something that people are gonna be like, oh? And I think he kind of touched on that a little bit with a scene coming up. We'll discuss that. <laughs> but um, I loved in like and then we can move on. But the scene with Santa. And when he gets it on the face and he's just like smashing him and the dude's eyeballs like moving. Like, oh yeah. I love that part. I, I, I like the, I like the, the, the kill. I'll be honest though. Like as far as like, you know, like the, the, the overall violence, mm-hmm. it's not as violent as I thought it was going to be. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like, and uh, that sounds so crazy because obviously it's super violent, but like compared to the other kills in the movie, um, you know, it, it, it's probably the most cartoonish one, yes. um, and uh, I, I enjoy it. I do, um, but I mean, really, this is all about let's get the fucking Santa suit on art, and we get Santa art. And then I love that Santa. <laughs> oh yeah, that's his thing. He's like he, he thinks he, Santa has a fake beard, so he rips his fucking beard off and wears it like a necklace. <laughs> I love that too. When he shows up to the call or to the the frat party, <laughs> he's yes. got it on him like. Dude. Did you not want him to go into the goddamn frat party? Like, I wanted yes. him to go into the frat party and, and party. like party with the people, yes. and then just fucking like annihilate some frat boys. I wanted to like have girls go up to him and be like, Burr, and him just be like, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like, oh yeah, yeah. Because I know David Howard Thornton has said that uh, art is a non-sexual creature, so there, there's no, because uh, uh, yeah, um, we'll see there. And you, you see, Damien actually said that, and I don't believe him because I. You ne- you can't really can't ever trust him. No. No. He said that art that he would never show art uh non aliving a child. Like that's why he did it off screen. But I'm like, you fucking lying sack of shit, because you for sure show him do it on screen a few scenes from where we're at right now, just not in a traditional slasher sense with direct a boom boom. <laughs> direct manner. It yes. was a, it was a very indirect manner, but I had a fucking feeling. I'm like, there's no way Art is showing up at this mall. And then when he was like pulling out the toys, I'm like, uh-uh, some, something's good, something's happening here. Yes. So, uh, well, I mean, I, I don't even know like chronologically where we're at at this point. Uh, I've like, only seen it once. So I think we like literally was like that Jonathan met. Oh, his that room, his that is the yes, yes, yes. And that it's that, and then it's the mall. Yes, and we can, it, it's small, but it's just so. Jonathan's roommate's girlfriend, who was super fucking annoying, and I could not wait until she got killed. I was like, please rip this bitch apart, and we got that. But the whole, and, and I will say for Lauren Libera, the scene, the interaction between them, um, and I don't know if this is before or after the part we're talking about, but. Let, let's, let's do the, 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 we can get the college thing pretty much all in, besides the one good thing that yes. happened in college. Yes. Um, for me, I love the interaction between her and the call the girl when she was like, Oh, well, just how you guys are coping. And she fucking loses her shit. Oh yeah. Because yeah, she's bothering her to be on her podcast and like, Oh, I didn't. And then I like that the boyfriend is like, you know, you are wrong. You know, like the boyfriend is honestly like, you could have easily made him be like the annoying boy, like roommate who hates Jonathan. But reality, it does seem like he actually likes Jonathan and is like, mm-hmm. what the fuck is wrong with you? Why would you ask these questions? Um, and, and, and like you said, Lauren Lavera did a great job. Of, Lauren Lavera did a great job in this whole fucking movie. Um, love, her. love her. Love her. I'm glad that she's getting a crack at a mainstream movie now with, with that one with Diamond, Diamond Hansu. Yes. Uh, but yeah, overall, though, I will say the weakest part of the entire movie, minus the kill that you get because of it, is Jonathan. and Co- Jonathan is, and it's not his fault. It's not the actor's fault. Mm-hmm. I think it's, he aged out of the role that he was supposed to play. And they made him so, but like they actively made him more boring. Like, oh, he's not the metal kid anymore. It was just a phase. Now I'm just a nerd who's a pussy who sits in his room all day and yeah he's not like the curious one about the clown and he's not the one pushing the matter it's now he's just like i'm pulling away because you know whatever and and it's unfortunate because i really wanted to see more of jonathan and sienna's relationship i I wanted to see like where they were with what happened like what happened with their trauma 
where that it put them did it unite them did it make them grow apart and i kind of feel like you know he was distancing distancing himself from her but i wish we would have gotten more more of like some sort of emotion from them i don't know i just felt like it was kind of like a cop out with jonathan i felt like yep. we didn't get to see him 100 right and then you know we'll get to the end which i still again have my theories on, on, on yeah that. i think you're 100 right i mean it, it's the thing is is that I mean, the relationship between Jonathan and Sienna, I mean, uh, is pretty much the heart of the first of second movie. Mm -hmm. Um, And Jonathan is basically a throwaway character in this movie. He has no other than a honestly, if you remove the what happens at the end of the movie Mm -hmm. doesn't really affect the movie at all. His character has no fucking bearing on the movie whatsoever. He's basically a throwaway character. And all the, the only purpose that he serves in this movie is my opinion, which you could have gotten to in another way is just is it it puts art in the college bathroom. That's, that's what it does. (laughs) And if that's all we needed to get him there, could have had other reasons. It could have been absolutely, but I'm I'm happy that we we get to the to the part because I'm telling you what, just from hearing everyone, oh the bathroom scene is a scene that lives rent free in my head. I'm like, dude, this better be fucking. Do you want to just talk about that now? Because again, yeah. that's sort of like a like a what? Yeah, we can. Yeah, because I feel like it's a side. It's kind of an art side excursion. It's not again really. It's not really narrative to the plot so we can kind of just go back to the plot from yes. here yes we can yes um what i love about this scene isn't even the overall i love the core but what my favorite this is my favorite kill in the movie mm-hmm. not the boy the girl yes and the reason for it is is one of my it's so fucking funny and great but I love that art is walking by the dorm room and he hears her talking about him. And he's, she's like, Oh, I'm, you know, arts. She's basically just glamorizing art and the, the all the murders that he does. And he's sitting, he's, he's off to the side going like, you know, waving like, Oh, you, yeah. you, you're, shucks. Shucks. Oh, you're just, that's you're talking about little old me. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then the last thing she says is, uh, I want to know what it's like to look in his eyes as you, as you're, as your life ends and know how that feels. And when that fucking happens, so they're in the shower having sex, which you, I don't think you see any nudity, which no, is, you just see like all side because we blocked Rosalind's face from that. But I was like, to, as I recall, I don't think there's any tits or anything until they don't, get, you might see like a nipple. Maybe. I don't know I if it is. Point, it's so brief. It's like, you can't see it. And I was going to say, and, and at the point where you actually kind of are seeing like a full blown shot, it's already bloodied and fucking, carved right the fuck up so there's there's no tits there yeah so art so art, art busts in with a chainsaw so we've never seen art use a chainsaw before mm-hmm. uh basically uh carves them up um i'm the i'm gonna i'm gonna describe the girl kill i'm gonna yeah. let you describe the boy kill okay yes. the, the, so the girl uh kill uh basically isn't at, I mean, it's brutal. Like uh, he chops her uh, her arm off, I believe, at first, yeah. slashes her gut, uh, and then he rips off her like face area. And the part that I just loved is again not even the gore. I mean, the gore is great, yeah. But I love when he gets down on his knees or sits down, and he takes his glasses off, and he looks her right in her fucking eyes that she, which she basically has no face now. And and she gets what she wants is her last thing. And then he places the fucking glasses on her eyes. And I was like, I mean, if there's a such thing as like a like a horror soul erection, I had one. Like, <laughs> it was full standing attention. Yes, it was perfect. I loved it. What did you think about the girl kill? That part, I'm t- when he took when he took those glasses off. And it was those crazy eyes just staring at her. And she got exactly what she wanted. I was like, Ooh. I fucking love that scene. I love it so much. Yeah. And and that's, to me, the reason I think why it stands out. Again, I, I love that the movie is funny. I do. Right. But two, again, when I feel like he's murdering the people, I feel bad for the people in the in those movies. I, I feel bad for the girl who he bashes with the, the, the chair with all the shit on the chair. I feel bad for the girl. I feel like you feel 
I, I feel true terror in those scenes. While most of these kills, I'm like, I'm just like, <laughs> you stupid dick. Like, this is I the know. one where I hate this character and I'm glad she died. But Same. it's the only one in the kill in this movie where I'm like, I got a little bit of that brutality, but not like just physical brutality, like mm -hmm. mental brutality. And, yeah. and I, I loved it. But the fact that you know, also that he can channel that so well with having it be, like you just said, a mental and a physical mm -hmm. and that he's like adding that element. I fucking love that. And that makes me so hopeful for future terrifying movies. Because let's be honest, we don't know if we're getting four or five. We don't know if we're getting four or five, six. We don't know what we're getting at this point. All we know is that we're getting four. We're at least getting four, probably getting four and five. Yes. He's already said uh, that he's definitely, we know we're getting four, but he said that he might not be able to put it all into one movie. And I'm like, no shit, Sherlock. Cause he <laughs> you don't, you, you're, you're not like shortening the pile of answers. Like, yeah, you know, exactly. you're not. You're, if you just keep going the way you're going, I mean, there's, it's never going to end, but whatever. And I feel like with each question we get answered, there's five more that's just dropped on us. Like, Oh, okay. Well this could be potentially something. Absolutely. But now, okay, let's go to what is I believe this is this is going to be the this is the vagina rip of this movie. <laughs> and I, okay, and I also appreciated that he did this because I looked at Greg and I said, "See, now people can't be mad saying he just obliterates females because he ripped a fucking dick tip and he stabbed the dude's dick in two. Yes, th I think this was, a, in my opinion, this was a direct response to all those people saying that Terrifier is misogynistic. Yeah. Well, then fine. We're gonna do. We're gonna give you, and I think very intentionally, we're gonna we're gonna do the vagina rip scene, but we're gonna do it with a boy, and we're gonna go way harder. And, and you know what? You can just shove it up your ass, which you, you know fucking did. And I tell you what. So after Homegirl gets hers, which I was so happy about, I was like, oh man, like go easy on the boyfriend because he was kind of like like a decent person. Oh no. <laughs> Go yeah. easy on him, you're saying. Go easy on him. And then it's the worst one. <laughs> oh, my. when he goes to step and his leg fucking break. Oh, oh, that part. I was just like, shit. And then Art just comes in with a chainsaw and just starts and just rips right up his fucking dick. Lit, like. Up his, up his dick and his butthole. Then the butthole scene. Oh, I'm sorry. Two, yeah. two separate scenes here, yes. But like, but he's still going in that motion. But when I tell you. When I saw what was going to happen with the butt scene, I clenched so hard. I was like, oh, my <laughs> God. Like, I don't care if you're a man or you're a fucking woman or what have you. Like, that would be excruciatingly just, like, no fucking thank you. But that scene. And and just, and also humiliating. <laughs> super humiliating. Like, Imagine you gotta, you, when you get that report, your your mom's like, well, how did, how did my son die? Well, yeah. <laughs> well, there's there's a thing about that. <laughs> and here's a couple pieces of your side, but like so, but as that's happening, and then you get the fucking blood angel and the one leg just off to the side, and he's just like he shrugs his shoulders, and then he's acting like a little kid. I, I and that was in the teaser trailer, and uh, I only know this because I was told about it. I've never, I never saw the teaser trailer, oh. and I. Was pretty happy that I didn't because I had no idea what that was going to happen. Um, I will say someone needs to teach David Howard Thornton how to do a snow angel because he did it in the weirdest way possible. I was like, you, you it, it's a, it's one motion, buddy. It's one motion. Yeah, you know, just, the yeah. arms and the legs are going together. But yeah. whatever, That's small, what small things. He'll be like rolling snowballs and doing like uh, <laughs> snowmen in the next one. But so that that scene was like. It was hyped up, but let me tell you, it lived up to the hype. Did it live up to the hype for you? Oh, well, see, I see. I didn't know about it at all. The, yeah. So the, the two thing, the two things that I knew about going into the movie that were spoiled for me was which one I don't even want to call it a spoiler. It had been we had discussed it. And it, it, it had pretty well known that the movie was going to open with with the child yes. with the child kill. Fine. But what somebody spoiled for me was the um, the scene with um, later in the movie when they take. Is it is it Greg? Is it or is Uncle it Uncle Greg? Uncle yeah. Greg? When they when Art rips his intestines out and wraps the tree with it, yes. those are the only two things I had, I had not seen any promotional material. Which by the way, I heard that the budget the budget of this was two million and then a half a million for uh, advertising, and I was like, 
where the fuck was the advertising? Because I am the target demographic for this movie, and I don't think I ever saw like an Instagram ad or like anything. Like I'm like, where to go? The, I think it might not have been because again, I I not to sound like a broken like a broken record, but I feel like since you didn't like look for trailers, then maybe your like algorithm wasn't gonna put maybe yeah, you know that's I mean? a good like, point. Teasers in there because I know I shared some stuff, but I wanted to kind of like pull back as much as possible because I know that there's some people that I'm super close with that don't partake in that and I didn't want to spoil any of that for them yeah. for you you know what I mean well, and and I appreciate that but yeah so I didn't know about this scene so there was no hype to live up to I just saw it enjoyed it and was like uh, and I will tell you again the girl was my favorite kill in the movie however when they cut to, and again, as, as I'm having the thought in my head, as I'm watching it, I'm like, this is in direct response to the to the people saying he's misogynistic. Yep. And this is this is the male version of the, the first, the, you know, the iconic kill in the first one. Mm -hmm. As soon as I have that thought, they cut to like the POV of the chainsaw. And when he puts it in and the two little balls just go, <laughs> and they shoot. <laughs> I know. I that one's. It. Oh, it was it was great. <laughs> and I saw like the dick wiggle. I was like, oh my god, it's so perfect. But it, it's the truth though, and that's you know what? I everyone is entitled to their own beliefs and like their their views on things. But I didn't yeah. find you okay. No, because Rosalind is bringing me Benadryl, but she's crawling on the floor. So I thought something was crawling at me, and it's my kid. <laughs> She just scared the shit out of me. I saw something. I'm like, what is that? It's art. <laughs> ah, you would kind of like that. I was going to say, I wish. Thanks, babe. But, um, but, the thing is, is like, I don't, I didn't, I never found terrifier to be misogynistic at all. I didn't think, I didn't think that that's not like my takeaway from it. I didn't, I wasn't like, oh, he's brutal on women. I just thought he was a fucking animal and I loved it. Yeah. I mean, as far as I have seen and I, I I've been on the page with you is art is the most equal opportunity murder in all of horror, probably in all splashers, to be honest with you. Yeah. I mean, discriminate at all, at all, a man, woman, children, if you're in his vicinity, you are a target. That is truthfully the way it is. And um, I don't ever get the impression that he is, I don't get the impression that he's a sexual character, that he's doing this because of a sexual nature of any kind. I, it, it's or just towards a woman directly. I think he just hates everyone. You are cattle. Everyone is cattle to him. But that's okay. But here's the thing. I want to know why. And I, that's the one thing I will say, because I know we're kind of like we are going through the movie and I love it because we're staying on track and we're making good progress. But that's my other thing, too, is when it got down to like talking about Jonathan's letter to Sienna saying that like he's a serial or it's a serial killer right well yeah do, do you want let's let's jump into the 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 reasoning that we are given that is finally and some answers that are given yes so the way i understand it and the way that i i if if if, I, if anything i say differs from what your understanding of it is please stop me in this basic breakdown i want to give for the listener no i want you to i want you to say what you are because i'm i'm sure you are on point so let's you just so what is it, it, it the way that I interpreted it and it was explained mm -hmm. is that there are demons. They can possess a human that has been through extreme trauma, mm -hmm. likely someone who has been through ex attacked by a serial killer. Mm -hmm. This is where Vicky comes into play. So art fucks Vicky up in the first movie. Art is a human in the first movie at the beginning. Art is a human. He fucks Vicky up so much that she becomes this vessel mm -hmm. that the demon can then possess. Yes. The demon, however, has to have an anchor to this world. The anchor to this world is usually chosen to be a serial killer, in this case, Art. Yes. This is why Art is unkillable, because anytime Art is fucked up, the demon just basically uses her demon powers to cure him. That is my understanding of where we are at in this movie is that at the end of the movie, at the end of part one, I believe Art truly thinks he is going to kill himself and that's it. However, because Vicky had been taken over by this demon, which is the little pale girl, by the way, the little yes. pale girl is the demon. Yes. 
the only part of that that doesn't make any fucking sense is how Jonathan saw the little pale girl in part two playing with a dead possum, but whatever. But that leads into like, not to, but like that leads into the possible, like of, I, I don't know. I, I You're right. Cause that doesn't make sense because well, I think it's just him making it up, but <laughs> he's fucking lying. Jonathan's been lying this whole goddamn time. He didn't really see nothing. Okay. Now I'm confused. Hold on. So it, it, it did it, it, our, it, is that what you thought the explanation was? Or is there differences to what you thought to what I said? I, I, that, I, I'm not sure. So like I said, in the first one, I was, I think I blacked out and I like all the like important talk. Like I listened to it, but I just think I was like, you know, drinking my Modelo, just watching like the kills. But I remember like reading the note and ex the explanation of it. So that led me to believe. Now, remember the, the news the news clipping article that I sent you after too, where it was the little pale girl and said mm -hmm. that she was murdered because it's the, the paper he's reading, uh, in the dry, in the, the, the dry cleaner. Yes. And he's like looking at yep. it and pointing. So like, obviously he must've killed her. Yep. Obviously. And then that has brought him to there, but like, I want to know his origin story. I want to know, like, was she the first kill? What prompted him to kill? Like what, what, what got us to art? And I always say, I don't need an origin story. Like with Halloween, I didn't need one for, for Michael Myers. I don't need one now. I, I think I'm good on that, on that regard. Mm -hmm. Then with art, I've said before, I really like how he showed up in, in the first one. It didn't have a plot. That's what I loved about the first one. I think I'm, I'm with you. I, I don't need a big origin story. Mm -hmm. I would like you, even if it's just a small one, I, I would like to know something because we don't, we know nothing about him. I mean, we know, like, we don't even know why he looks the way he looks. Like, that's not a human face. Thank like, you. That's, that's a, I mean, obviously, like, there's all kinds of prosthetics and whatnot. Uh, and by the way, going from watching Terrifier 1 to 3, you're like, God damn, that budget went up because he like, kind of looks like shit in the first movie. Uh, it's true. <laughs> uh, but, like, um, so I, I'm like, I'm like, so physically, I don't even know what I'm looking at. Like, th this is presumably a human but I don't know why it is. Why is he a clown? <laughs> you know, you've answered me why he's unkillable or was spoiler alert. Right. Uh, but you've not answered me anything about what, who he is and why he does what he does. And also too, like I'm thinking, so does he, is he wearing the black and white? Because like, that's the common fucking denominator of like the vessel or the person or the person that's orchestrating this, you know, or like, like that's their dress code because you have the little pale girl she's in black and white and then when Vicky started making the dress like her I'm like okay so now she's the little like now she's back in the spot yeah as art sidekick so like is like is that bred from the carnival and like him killing the people in the news clipping so I'm hoping that we get like a full circle moment of explanation because I really want to know like what I'm thinking is kind of on point yeah, I'm with you. That, that I mean, going back to real quick, our arts, like you said, like you know, why does he wear the makeup, or why the black and white? Well, you know, like it, it, his makeup never rubs off. Like, is it even makeup? Right. Going from part one, they do something very interesting. Obviously, the budget went up, but part one, you know, when he takes the little like thing on, he's got like a normal head. You know, he's got like, a, but then in part. Two, two or three, yep. he takes off like the the hood thing, and he's got like almost like an alien fucking head. Like it's like yes. it's like bulbous and 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 and, and Alistair White. It like it looks crazy, and I'm like, okay, so what are you, dude? Like, and that's and that's the thing is, I feel if like you're not a demon, you, you it is now have to he has to be human. Like the the story they've laid out is, Vicky was the demon. He was just a serial killer who happened to get lucky and get this demon situation. <laughs> yes. And that's, and that's where I want to know. Like, that's the only thing that like holds like that. Not saying that it like, it keeps me from enjoying it because I fucking love the movie and I think it's great and it's so much fun. But like, I just get so caught up on these little things. Cause I'm like, I just need to know. Oh. I just want to know. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's why we're, I, I'm like, I had to talk to someone who finally like is into this shit. Like, I love it, but I love, you know what, for me, I love, 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 because I saw you shift at two. I mm -hmm. love seeing everyone else kind of like coming to 
Yeah, I mean, the, franchise because the films are noticeably improving. I mean, I, I think that yeah. even from an, if you don't like Terrifier movies, even if you're one of those people who's like, I don't like them, that's fine. But I objectively, the quality of the overall films are improving with each entry. Yes, and it's and it's beautiful because I loved All Hallows Eve. I loved one. And again, I want to stay on the record because you are my BFF and you can vouch for this. I have loved Terrifier since the fucking beginning. That's okay? why you're the queen. <laughs> okay. Everyone like is dressing up like him, and I love that I'm here for it. But it's like, listen, I love art. I loved him from the beginning. Okay? Oh, yeah, I, I know you did. I'm a I'm a con I'm a convert. I love it too because honestly, like it just makes me so happy that people are enjoying it and people are getting used to the idea. Like even if they didn't like it before and that they're like, Oh, I'll go see it. I love that. Yeah, I mean hundred percent to this point, I'm like I'm so like I keep seeing like similar posts and like I'm not making fun of people for their content. Content is content. I mean, we all do it, but mm -hmm. I've seen so so many pages like post the question like, is art a horror icon? Fuck you. There's not even a debate. Why ask the question? That's like asking is, is fucking Michael Myers a Hall or Halloween icon? It just made fucking history at the box office. So yes, he is. It is unequivocal whether you like him or not. He's a horror icon. And to me, he was a horror icon in in two, I oh, was like, okay, okay, like two, put him on the map. Three, like solidifies that art has literally like deserved his spot because honestly, like this whirlwind of like his blow up is amazing. So, yeah. and it's it's here. awesome to see. Yes, we love you, and, Dave. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. We love you, David Howard Gordon, so much. I, I love you, and I just, just I've never seen interviews with him before. Just never went down that rabbit hole. Finally saw some interviews with him. Seems like a lovely human being. I would love to meet him and, and just get his autograph or whatever. See, sounds seems awesome. Did you see that one I posted real quick? Just because you're on that topic and I'm not interrupting. I'm so sorry, oh, but I no, you're fine. About him when he went to his high school reunion. Yes, yeah. Uh, about the the girl who was like recognized that he was in a movie, and then like her attitude like totally changed. And he's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, I don't remember you." I was like, "That is the most savage fucking response," and I'm, I love that for him because he just seems like a genuinely good dude. Is that the one where he's like, they're playing like some like really nerdy like board game like with like like the the figurines or whatever? There was an interview I saw that he was doing, and I don't remember what it was, but it just made me love him. They were playing like Warhammer, I think, which is like a really really nerdy like like board game, but like you you like you paint little figure. It's really it's super nerdy. I was like I always wanted to be into it when I was a kid, but I I, I just when I saw him playing with it, I'm like, dude, you're awesome. Like you just you keep being you. Yeah, just be you, and we're gonna love you for that. But he was playing with Legos in that interview. Okay, it was Legos. Okay, okay. Because the guy yes. that, does, that does the interviews, he like has the people come out and play and do Legos, which I think is so cool. But just his storytelling. Like, it's so crazy that, like, he's non-vocal in the movies, but when he speaks in real life, like, I just want to sit and listen to him because, he, like, the Joker voice that he does, he's just, like, an, an amazing human being. Well, you know what I would like? I mean, granted, I love him as our little indie horror mm -hmm. king, you know, but I also, you know, I'm sure he wouldn't mind uh, getting paid. Uh, <laughs> uh I uh, I would like to see him, like, a, a studio give him a crack at, like, an Andy Circus role. I mean, Andy's can't be the only one who does this motion capture shit. You're mm -hmm. telling me that if you, you know, for the next Planet of the Apes movie, if you stuck uh, stuck uh, David in one of those fucking uh, mocap suits, that he wouldn't be awesome at that? Because I think he would be. Oh, fuck yeah. He was even really good. I thought he was good in Scream. And, like, he's still playing a serial, like, a killer. But he, I just, he's, like, meant for these, like, physical roles of, like, using your body because he just exudes personality with his body movements. But he's very good at it. I mean, I think if I'm correct, he was, like, an actual, he's, like, an actual trained clown, which is probably why he's so good. Yeah. And then I saw that he, like, he said he based his art performance off of, like, a children's show from like the early 2000s i think uh, did you see that like some weird character that has like a fucked up looking head i, I didn't i was like what is this frightening thing on television <laughs> but it makes sense i mean if he's you know using that as his basis yeah. yeah but um okay now you go back to your point of what you were saying oh nothing i that was it i'm that, that was i was done oh okay so now where are so we're where are we at so we're, now we're back at the home the homes. Oh, no, no, no. We're at the mall. We're at the mall. And yes. They're shopping. They're shopping. Uh, Sienna thinks she sees art, but he's wearing some, he's wearing like a mask over his already sort of 
mask face. Like it's very weird looking. I starts handing out presents to the kids. Um, and uh, this is like you said, like you're obviously something big's going to happen here. And to me, this was the, you know, the dream sequence in two where he's yeah. taking the gun and he's plowing people down. Exactly. I could just, I was like, this is going to be that, but it's, this is going to be real. Like that's, and this is going to be the chaos scene. Yes. And like, not to sound morbid, but the fact that like the kids are coming back and grabbing stuff, I'm like, oh, he's going to obliterate these fucking kids. And how is it going to happen? And then when Tommy, oh, what's in my box? Does he say it's ticking or what does he say? I don't really remember. I, I just, I just know he grabs it and he's like, oh, I got the last one or something like that. And <laughs> then he fucking opens it and little kid just boom you know they say five people died i'm like i don't know how it was only five because there were there was a lot of kids in that immediate vicinity there was like 10 during the bag and then the mob space was completely just blown off but i was like okay like again of course you have to go to the the fullest extreme of taking <laughs> like family and kids in a mall with a bomb like no, and did you did you did you catch it where those presents are from? By the way, yeah, they're from the house. Yeah, they're from the house in the beginning of the movie. Which I I was like, okay, I like that. Now timeline wise, you know where you're at. It's exactly. just kind of a fucked up weird thing is that you don't really know where you're at till you're 40 minutes into the movie. <laughs> it's true. Then you're like, oh wait, how did I get here? Yeah, I'm here at least. But I loved that they had the possum toy. I love that little nod oh, towards to uh, the previous one. Yeah, but so, th so that was awesome. So then. Uncle Greg tells Sienna and she starts fucking freaking out and Jonathan needs to get there. So Greg goes to get Jonathan. Uh, yep. And we're pretty much at the end game of the movie now. Um, yeah. I mean, there's obviously some interstitial stuff, but really we're at the end game because we already described the college experience. Yep. Um, Jonathan uh, takes takes one of his pills and uh, presumably passes out because I think they're like sleeping pills or something. Mm -hmm. You see him do that, which will come in later. Mm -hmm. um, and basically, uh, I mean, I've, how do we get there? Just is, oh, she gets knocked out by art, right? Yes, she gets, so she's at the house. Sienna, right? And yes. She gets, she gets knocked out and then she comes to and it's her and Aunt Jess in the living room. Mm-hmm. Oh, and while and, and while she's and while she's knocked out, she has a dream, which is the first time I think you see an angel, uh, which I actually thought that like while it was obviously cheap and low budget, I liked the effect of the the way the angel looked. Me too. And you, the angel has presumably a monster, a demon. I don't know what the fuck it is. Uh, yeah. Chained up, uh, making her armor uh, from the first. A sec, I keep saying the first because two is almost like it, one, it is two. the first one that has a story. Like. Yes, yes, I get that. I get the you're saying. I know what you mean. <laughs> um, I thought that imagery was really cool. What do you think about that? I love that scene. I love that whole because it it made me feel like like tying shit back in and like okay, this is a serious story and like there is like depth to it and that fucking creature with the weird teeth and the way it was looking at her i was like oh shit like okay yeah it's and it's good uh but yeah art knocks out sienna uh sienna comes to she's face to face with her aunt and in between them is a bird it's cage. a it's a bird cage with which is very clearly a human head inside of it. Yes. It's not like a sport. It's not like a dun, dun, dun. It's like, yeah, there's a head in there. Like you, you can see like the blood, like in the yeah. paper. And that was like my biggest thing. I'm like, okay, so who the fuck could it be? Then I see uncle Greg on the wall with yep. his arms stretched out and like his insides out. So I'm like, okay, well obviously he got Greg. So that immediately I was like, I don't think it's Gabby. I think it's Jonathan. Yeah. I, I immediately thought the same thing. Um, I thought it was Jonathan as well. Hoping it wasn't. <laughs> I was hoping it wasn't because I, okay, here's my thing. If you're going to, if he is truly dead, I want to see that. And what he said to that was after delivering the bathroom scene, he thought that everyone was going to be desensitized to showing something as serious as Jonathan's death. But I don't believe that man for one fucking second that Jonathan is dead. Yeah, so obviously we've said it. So what 
because I, I, I'm with you. I don't know. I mean, I don't believe anything he fucking says. Uh, he's, uh, he's so full of shit. And I don't think he knows the answers himself until he puts it on screen. Uh, True. But. OK, so, yes, uh, the so Greg is dead. Uh, you don't really see him die. He's just on the wall, like uh, kind of put up like a like a cross. There's a lot of biblical shit here in this last scene. Yeah. Um, they play with they, they decorate his the tree with his organs. Um, they lie to the mother and say that the skull in between them is Gabby's. Then. Uh, I think the mother tells Sienna, like, kill the make these fuckers pay or some shit like that. Oh, my God. Real quick. We missed not like not that it's super important, but yeah. one thing, another thing that kind of irked me was when Jonathan and Sienna were having their conversation and she's like, I have to go back to the clown cafe. Didn't show any of that. Or not the clown cafe to the terrifier. Oh yeah. I, okay. I was about to be like, well, how the fuck do you, Oh yeah. 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 Cause yeah. it's yeah. They skip over her going to the terrifier. Cause she very clearly was going to get the sword, mm -hmm. the magical sword, uh, which they, she wrapped up as a present. Yes. And that's, a, I, I just wanted to, because for me, like, I love the Terrifier sequence, like being in the Terrifier. Like, I, I think that would be a great house, a haunted house in some regards. So I was like, fuck, like, I wish they would have shown her going back to the Terrifier. But I guess, like, it's not really like it's needed. So, I mean, it's already a long movie, but, you know, it's not like they didn't have it because they shot at the, they shot at the, 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 the scene because there is a scene. It's unimportant to the plot. There is a scene uh, at the beginning of the movie where the cop is in the Terrifier by himself. And Art, uh, Art's headless body wakes up. <laughs> the tax of, I forgot about that. Yeah, yes. yeah. And but then, yeah. That's just one of my little gripes. Because, like, these are things that, as a Terrifier fan, I would have liked to have seen her go back. But, like, you said the movie already being two, two hours and ten minutes instead of 20 minutes this time. Like, I understand wanting to probably cut it down. But at this point, it's like, whatever. So... I mean, I think they, they did. a. I mean, you knew what happened. She comes back. She's got the fucking box. It's clearly the sword. She's got the dirt all over her hands. And yes. you know where, where she was. Like, yes. Me, um, it's just me wanting to see it. But so now we're at these. We're at this. This this part where. Go go ahead and describe it. It's Gabby. And everyone starts freaking out. It's Gabby. Oh, oh, oh. And I'm like, that ain't fucking Gabby. Yeah. And then they proceed to. Uh, Art with his fucking rats, they take a, he takes a, a glass like, tube tube and shoves it in the ant's mouth. And I mean, like when I tell you, he fucking whacks it in there. It's just bleh, 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 and you can hear oh, you can hear choking, so gross. And then he takes a fucking rat and puts it in there and then lights it up with a torch so the rat goes inside mm -hmm. the ant's mouth down in, and then they proceed to slit her throat and the fucking dead rat comes out well they weren't dead oh yeah they were alive <laughs> excuse me they were i believe dead. art stomps on them afterwards yes just, that, oh. yes yes and, and but, but you know that's a real thing that they did by the way back in the day what oh yeah they, they would they would do they that would, shit they, well they wouldn't do it in the mouth they would just they put it on your stomach and the, the rats would claw through your stomach that's like a gangster shit like that's like mob stuff right um i believe it was that as well as like the like the inquisition i believe that's how they tortured some people um, but yeah, it's a, it's a really good looking see at this point when I still thought it was, what's her name from sex in that city? I was like, God, I'm like, Selma Blair is game. I was like, <laughs> I, was like I can't believe they got her to do this. I can see you being like, Jesus. I'm like, geez, like she must yeah. love horror movies. I'm like, Selma Blair is awesome. <laughs> if I were any actress in Hollywood, I would jump at the opportunity to get killed by art. But anyway, yeah, we, we, we yeah, absolutely. Um, now, there's a small thing here, which Damien said was just something he um, uh, opined uh, off the top of his head that got probably some of the biggest laughs of the entire movie in my theater. And that's where every time Art is walking back, he just kind of slaps, uh, just gives her like a like, like a, a, a slap on the back of the head. And it's it. I mean, it sounds cruel, but it is fucking funny. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I love the slap sound, and he just walks by, dink, and she's yeah. sitting there with the fucking thorn crown on her head. Yes, like, they put what? the... Now, it's at this point that Sienna's 
presumably lost everybody mm-hmm. that they pull Jonathan's glasses out and they put Jonathan's glasses onto the skull revealing what they say is that it's not Gabby who's dead. It's Jonathan. I am with you. I here's the thing. I want one of two things. Okay. Either you better show me in a flashback in part four that he that how he died. I want to see him fucking die because he is a there's not a lot of characters that are actually like throughout these movies, but there was really two mm-hmm. and you killed one of them off screen. Yeah, or I think he's full of shit and he'll somehow be alive. I don't think that he's dead. And I think they're just trying to get Sienna to feel like she's lost everything because they want her to be the anchored vessel. Because when she's sitting in the chair and her eyes turn that color, remember? Yeah. And then she like, she gets out of it. I think that that's going to be like the boyfriend or the girlfriend from the shower scene. It's, it's, I, I don't think, I don't think it's anyone. I don't think it's Gab. Obviously, it's not Gabby. I don't think it's Jonathan. I think it's just a, it was a, pl- a ploy to get Sienna to where she is, and we'll find that out in four. Which whatever, and I'm with you. If they if they if it, he is in fact dead, and they don't show it, I'm going to be really fucking pissed. Yeah, I, I think you have to show it, or it's not. And honestly, if he's not dead, I'm still going to be like, well, then then that cheapens what it is then and like then then you know now going back retroactively, it's like well then this doesn't fucking matter. It's just some rando. Exactly, but he did say that he is not to be trusted. Like he called himself out and said he's not to be trusted, and that like I can't. I feel like he tiptoed around, like saying that he's actually dead. dead. So I don't. I don't fucking believe it, which is fine because it makes me want to obviously see more from four. Obvi- I'm, I'm. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm, I could be a, a terrifier fucking ten, and I'd still be like willing to go. Like, if motherfucker can go in space down in the thousand leagues under the sea. I'm there. Well, the reason why I think he's not dead is that if you if he is truly dead, mm-hmm. then going into four, there's nobody left at all. I mean, it's just it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, Sienna all by herself. I mean, and so what are we gonna do? Just introduce. I mean, obviously, in some some regards, you're going to have to introduce just random new characters that are basically just here to get chopped up. You know, <laughs> like they're not going to matter uh, in the long run. A thousand uh, percent. Or like she's going after Gabby. Well, yeah. So let's 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 take her home here. Yeah. Um, OK. Sienna uh, tricks the 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 witch, I believe is what the fans are referring to as tricks Victoria into letting her open a present um art smashes her hands with a hammer that looks fucking wickedly brutal yeah um but we're clearly getting some 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 jesus allegories with the hands being damaged and the crown of thorns it's not subtle at all <laughs> right not at all and this is a thing that i think damien fucked up on a little bit okay cuz obviously we have heard we heard her father when you have this sword you know, it, you know, nothing will hurt you. We've seen the sword magically heal her wounds before. We we know that. Mm-hmm. You need to show that because, again, if someone's walking into this for the first time, they don't know what the fuck just happened because you don't. All you see is her pick the sword up and all of a sudden magically her hands are healed again. We, as people who saw too, know what just happened. Yes. But you need to show that because you know, you're not exactly clear with what the rules are for (laughs) even when you're trying. So you needed to show her hands like heal. I think personally, a a thousand percent, because when did they heal? When do you, when, when, when did they actually heal? Well, they don't show it's it's a suit. What presumably as soon as she grabs the sword, because they don't show you it like, like in part two, they physically show her like in the floaty space juice, whatever, and And like show her wounds heal. mm -hmm. So presumably, as soon as she grabs the sword, her hands heal. But they don't show that. They don't show that. So you're like, you're just left to go, you know, like, I have to fill in the dots. Mm -hmm. And I think that's kind of bad, lazy filmmaking, honestly. Um, And she grabs it. She she kills fucking uh, Victoria. So Victoria's dead. She has, and Victoria melts into like a puddle of presumably going to hell, I'm assuming. The portal to hell, yes. And and Sienna has to make a choice to either try because Gabby falls in the hole. She's hanging on the ledge. It's like cliffhanger. Yeah, 
and fucking holding on to that goddamn knife. Yeah, so she has to make a choice. To basically, she can kill Art or she can try and save Gabby. So she, she makes the choice to try and save. She stabs Art. Art is fucked up. Art no longer has powers anymore because his demon whatever is gone. Yep. Um, and and then in the stupidest fucking way possible of trying to save Gabby, instead of getting literally anything else in the whole fucking house, what am I going to hand you? A fucking sword. Yeah, you hold on to the dull end, and I yeah. hold on to the fucking blade. And slice this fucking sword, which uh, tr- turns out my dad's a liar, because supposedly he said that it will never hurt me. Well, it was fucking cutting her hands up, and then it, they did heal later. Which, by the way, then it fucking showed her hands heal later so why didn't whatever yes you're right and also too as you're saying this what if what if we come back to four and jonathan is the vessel and he is going to be the the little pale or like the the tall pale guy you know what i mean like so i have thoughts i don't i personally don't think that's going to happen okay so we're at the end here. Yeah. <laughs> Gabby fall Gabby falls in the pit and she's presumably in hell or some other dimension, uh, wherever these things are from. Mm-hmm. Pit seals up. Uh Art makes a run for it. He gets away. Art is on a bus, uh, and he's it just basically shows him driving off. I love Art- that. I love that scene though. When he, yes, it is when good. His eyes and, and how serious he is, and then he's just like sitting there. And it ends like that. I was like, fuck yes. And then the final line of the movie, which is what you have to assume is going to be the entire premise of part four or five mm-hmm. is uh, Gabby. I will find you. Yes. Credits. So here's why my thoughts and my personal take on why I don't think Jonathan's going to be a vessel. I don't think there's going to be a vessel anymore. Okay. Going by what captain don't trust me said he was trying to move away from the fantasy elements of the movie and wanted to bring it back to a more grounded way. Yep. Well, at the end of this movie, the magical sword is gone. Art has no powers. Now he is just a human again. So if he he can't regenerate anymore, yep. I feel that that is the way that he has closed that loop so that he can have a more straightforward slasher. The one glaring problem with that is that now somehow sienna has to go to hell to save gabby so like, i don't know I, that's what i mean is like how can you get rid of that element when literally your neat your cousin or whatever went to a, a like a hell portal and you have to go save her like you can't get rid of it that, and that's what i mean it's like i i want him to pick a lane because you could do the next one like this where it's paranormal and it's a slasher but like at what point are we going to home it in and make this fucking sensible? Yeah, I'm I'm with you. I mean, I think he needs to he needs to make up his. I mean, this is the crazy thing is that we as horror fans give him a lot of slack. But could you think of another franchise where you're like at part four and you're like, all right, buddy, you need to figure this stuff out. <laughs> like most people would be like already be like, fuck this franchise, you know, like. But it's just the elements are fun as it is. But I don't know. What 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 did you think of the ending uh, and that whole scene we just described? And I guess the movie as a whole. So real quick to what you were just saying, though, like, you know, it's funny because I was thinking that, too. You have him who's doing these movies. And you have David Gordon Green who did his fucking three movies. And mm-hmm. like that was the end of them. Do you know what I mean? Well. Not really the end of them. They wanted to like give him a, a couple more chances, but then they cut him off at the Exorcist. It's like, okay, I'll give you one more beer, and you better not puke or fuck it up. And then he's barfing all over the place, yeah. literally. So that's why I think it's cool that Terrifier fans are getting a little bit more grace than David Gordon Green. But anyway, just well, he's also just making more entertaining movies. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. And I love even that. if they are messes, they are beautiful messes, and yes. there are elements uh, that. Are enjoyable. Yes, other than trash bags. But anyway, um, so the end scene, I really enjoyed it because I didn't feel like it was drawn out as long as the last one, because that was a huge issue. Just like you know, rewatching it over and over again, the many times that I did, it's like I love two, but it could have like it could have ended at least four, five, four, four times. It 
Do you know what I mean? I feel the length when I watch two. Like, like yeah. when I watch two, I'll be honest, there's like there's always a couple scenes and I'm like, skip, yep. skip. Yep. I didn't skip. feel this drag though. I felt like this was a for all the chaos that's happening, mm -hmm. I was entertained from beginning to end. I never once was bored. Same. And for me, the only thing that I wanted cut it, cut out of this was the Hallmark shit in the beginning. Like the, the, the exchange between Gabby and her for like 10 minutes or how, ah. like with the music and stuff, I was like, I would have been fine with just like a, hi, you're super important. Like, let's move along. And like the ending felt great. It felt, it felt like a, a good run time. For, I don't know. Either way. Yeah. Um, I felt great afterwards. I want to see, I can't wait to see four. Um, you know, I just, I wanted to give my honest opinions after seeing it for the first time is that I had questions, but then I just had to like, think it out myself. I had to like put, make, connect the dots, do all that. Um, I, I just, I love it. It's, it was my number one anticipated and I still feel like it, it lived up to the hype and it lived up to what it was supposed to do. And I'm just happy to have it. I, and I'm right there with you. I, 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 I dare say, I still think part two is my favorite mm -hmm. because I like the darker tone that it has. Yep. That being said, I think three is objectively probably the best movie. Like, if that makes sense. Like, while I, I think two is personally my favorite just because it has certain elements that I really, really love. Yep. Part three overall is the fine, the, like the, the best crafted overall movie yep. still with some flaw. I think there's never not going to be flaws in this franchise, but like it, it there, there's less flaws in this than they are in the, in the other two. And also to like, I think when we take flaws that, that we know that we openly discuss and stuff, we still like it as a, like as entertainment. So we just let it go because we know that we enjoy it. So like I did that the other, when you said it, you just threw on terrifier. I just, I threw on, I threw it on the other day too, just cause, I fucking love it. You know what I mean? Like, it's just one of those movies where I could be doing nothing and I'd want to sit and watch it. I could be doing chores and cleaning the house and I'd want to watch it. That's just, overall, they're just, for the most part, enjoyable movies. And I am I'm I can't wait to watch it when it's like the Christmas setting and I have the fucking Christmas tree out and then R.T. Claus comes out. I'm, yeah, it's, I same thing. I mean, with the exception of one, I, I which I still watch it, it, roughly once a year, just because I'm like, maybe. Well, um, well. but two, and I can tell you, three is going to be in that list of just one of those movies that I watch that just makes me happy. Like I left the theater. I told you, like, not joking, not like being like uh, trying to get attention or whatever. I literally, for like the three days after I saw this movie. Art was in my fucking dreams. Like, <laughs> love it I, so much. Like, I was, I could not stop thinking about the movie. Uh, and and the all of the thoughts that were had, all of the discussions that we had, I've had in my head already yes. forty fucking times. Yes. And like, w when a movie can do that to me, it's something special. Um, and I. I'm a, I'm a convert. I love this franchise now. Like two and three are some of my favorite movies of the last decade. And I I had so much fun. I, I, I can't wait to watch it on Halloween night. And I'll probably watch it again uh, the week of Christmas. And I'm so excited for it. I love that. It makes me so happy. And I don't know. I just, my horror heart is fulfilled. I literally... Like I have my top three solidified. I don't think it's going to change too much with the coming movies, but there is one that I'm really excited about. That's um, the Heretic with Hugh, Hugh Grant. Yeah, that looks that looks interesting. Uh, I'm definitely wanting to see that one. Probably won't catch it in theaters, but uh, I definitely want to see that one. I'm in, I'm intrigued by that one. But we got we got our our horror movie of 2024, and I'm satisfied and. You know, I was trying to not be my normal self <laughs> when people after the first time be like, how was it? And be like, oh, I fucking loved it. I wanted to like give it some time and be honest. Like I had questions. I don't know how I felt about it. Just in the regard of like overall and like where I thought it was. Yeah. I, you know what I, I mean? I, I get it because I, this is my first 
this is my first time seeing this movie. And I think having the feeling that you get from all three of these, mm -hmm. like, while I love you. And I, I, I put that as my favorite horror movie of 2022. Yeah. Um, and, my second favorite movie overall of that year. Uh, this is the first, this is my first experience seeing it in theaters. Um, yep. And it's, I, I left that theater feeling something special and I, it's not perfect. It's, it has its, it's, you know, rough edges, but overall, I mean, this is something special and it's something that you can feel it in what it's doing to the horror community. Mm -hmm. And what I hope 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 horror legends and filmmakers out there i hope that they honestly just maybe decide for all genres mm -hmm. maybe the mpaa can go fuck themselves like what do you need them for if exactly. if if he if a, a little guy like this can make you know this movie go out there make a substantial make 25 times its budget over and not deal with the MPAA. Okay. What do you need them for? Like why? Why? Like why? Who, who, it, no, there is no purpose except self filating You know, some assholes that want to tell you what you can and can't put in your movies. Exactly. And I love the fact that Damien did not back down. He doubled up, and he's like, "No, I'm not going to water this movie down so we can get this and this and this. I'm going to amp it up. I'm going to do what I want to do, and it's gonna, it's gonna be fine." And then us horror fans just <laughs> right right up and you know what i'm gonna keep i'm gonna buy the umbrella box set that's 135 dollars that has every single movie in there that has the posters i don't give a shit take my money <laughs> i i love it i can't there's terrifier socks from fright rags that i'm gonna get like i am so happy for him and everyone that's included on this project because it's like the little engine that could and it's such a an amazing like I don't want to say heartwarming, but like a motivational, like movement. Like it, it just shows if you have a dream, fucking do it. Like put, yeah. put your, put your love and time into it and, and watch it grow. Like look, look what it is now. It's a fucking yeah. juggernaut. Yeah. And it's one of those things that like, I'm seeing other people outside of the horror bubble, like give it its flowers. No. Not even just for, like, again, even if you don't like these movies, what this movie did is important and mm -hmm. it, can change things in the industry. I mean, you know, I, it, this could be, this could shake things up a bit in the industry and we could see more fun shit like this happen. I mean, the last time that this happened, mm -hmm. it did not go this way. Uh, the last time that I remember this happening was when, uh, Adam, Adam green did the hatchet series yep. and hatchet two went to theaters unrated and, one week into the th uh, the theater uh into its theater run um the the advertisers uh bitched that they they didn't want their shit shown in front of the movie and they pulled it and killed the movie and basically killed the whole future of the franchise <laughs> wow yeah uh which is rude yeah i mean in many ways i mean i I much prefer Terrifier, but uh, Hatchet crawled so that Terrifier could run. Uh, if I if I'm being really honest, but anyway, I, I just I loved it so much, Jordana. I'm so happy that we finally got to have this conversation because uh, I, I a love just chit chatting with you and doing this show. Same. But this was a particular episode that I feel will probably like this will be right up there with the Jaws episode that we did on your show as like Fuck two yeah. of my favorite things we've ever done. Fuck yes, and I hope everyone listening enjoys it. Uh, love to hear your comments and your thoughts. So definitely let us know, shoot us a message, comment, you know, in whatever inbox or comment section that this is going to be on. But I am equally happy that we finally got to fucking talk it. Hopefully, maybe at some point we could watch a terrifying movie together. I would be fucking dope. Imagine like us meeting up for like a first watch of like four or five. That would be incredible. I, we need to manifest that shit. And then it's the first one that we're like, man, that sucked. <laughs> Could you imagine? I feel like it would be a true fashion for us where we'd be looking, we'd look at each other and be like, that fucking sucked. <laughs> did, you ever, did you ever just real quick, did you ever see the movie Fanboys? Uh -uh. It's a movie about, it's a, it's about the, uh, about a, a group of super Star Wars fans and they're trying to see yes. Phantom, Phantom Menace before their friend passes away because they're, he's sick. 
Yes. It has and the whole good. movie is them trying to get to it. And at the very last line of the movie is they're sitting in the theater, finally watching it. And they just, the one guy just goes, what if it sucks? And then credits. <laughs> <laughs> that is perfect. But that would totally be us. But you know what? The experience would be amazing. And I would be happy no matter what. It would be awesome. Yes. Well, I know we are hitting just at the two hour mark. I think this is a sign. Um, please like, rate, share, subscribe. Tell us what you thought about Terrifier. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Did you like the balls exploding? Like what? What? What did you like or not like about it? And uh, out of your throat. Yes. <laughs> and uh, we will see you guys on the next episode. Bye. Bye.